All right, everyone, going to be getting into another NFL DFS video here. Going to be bringing back a video segment that I did a lot last year, which is going to be the lineup builder video. Going to be touching on my favorite core plays that I've already mentioned, highlighting some value plays that I want to be on, some potential fades and some stacks, all while implementing that into the lineup builder, as well as showing you guys a good cash build as well. Let's go and get into it. So let's kind of start off with who were my favorite core plays for this slate. Uh, looking at running back Jordan Mason and Kyron Williams, two of my favorite plays on the slate. It's going to be two of everyone's favorite plays on the slate as well. Um, and then from there, Jaden Reed is going to be extreme chalk. I would imagine now, given the fact that we got news that uh, Romeo Dobbs is going to be out as well, uh, Dontavian Wicks will also probably get a little bit more ownership. I'm just not sure how much more, maybe up to 20%. These are GPP uh, projected ownerships. And then Tucker Craft as well. I could see him gain a little bit more ownership as well. Uh, the thing with it is this is a great matchup for all of them. And I think they're going to be all great plays. Also, I have Christian Kirk mixed in there as well, who I just really love the matchup that he's going to be in as well. So I'll show you guys what kind of maybe a, a cash or kind of court plays build you guys could come up with with this kind of structure in place. And so obviously most of the build is already made by putting in all of those core plays. The question is, where do you want to go from there? I actually think Jordan Whittington is going to be a great option. And he's actually probably a pivot off of uh, a potentially chalky Tyrone Tracy Jr., who most likely will be starting in place of Devin Singletary. I think they're both going to be good plays. I just think Whittington might have around the same floor, but he also might have a little bit more upside there. So I don't mind chasing that. Uh, if we look at this DST-wise, you guys know my strategy by now. Hopefully, uh, my strategy is to find the lowest price defense that's not going to go negative. This week, I kind of see that being the Carolina Panthers going against that Chicago offense with Caleb Williams that hasn't looked that good just yet. At the same time, we're going to have salary to be able to pay up for really which wherever we want to go. Uh, given this roster construction that we have, I think just going Jordan Love makes the most sense. We have 8K left over. Then we can pay up a little bit more defensively. Does it really matter? Probably not. Uh, Las Vegas against Denver is going to be the most appealing. So as you guys can see, a very kind of safe build, but also a very kind of chalky build at the same time. But we can get a little bit unique by going Whittington. I mentioned you could easily go Tracy instead of Jordan Whittington there instead. And then let's go ahead and get back into the 9-5 to five NFL cheat sheet. And I just want to show you guys kind of who are the highest projected on players thus far as it sits right now. I'll toss in the timestamp so you guys can kind of see as to when I'm recording this video. Obviously, this is going to change. But right now, it's looking like Jordan Mason, Kyrie Williams, Jaden Reed. And then the first kind of one that I would disagree with is actually Derrick Henry. To me, guys, it's kind of crazy for Derrick Henry to be the fourth highest owned player on the slate, especially at his price, I guess, the highest priced running back on the slate. That's more due to him being a risky uh, GPP only type play. And the way the reason I phrase it that way is because let's say the Bengals and, and don't get me wrong, Baltimore's favorite one by two and a half points or so high scoring game as well. I get why people aren't Henry, but he is a game script type player. He can get game scripted out of the game like we saw in the first two weeks. OK, so if the Bengals are actually playing with the lead, if the Ravens are playing from behind, we're going to see a lot more of Justice Hill. So I'm not saying don't play Derrick Henry. What I am saying is make sure to be on Justice Hill as well. That's a direct and easy pivot that you can make uh, ownership wise. You know, from there, we have to scroll down a while for me to get to like some ownerships that I kind of disagree with. From that point on, it does seem to be like the ownership is mostly correct in terms of how I see the slate going. So lots of chalk, lots of correct chalk. Kind of is that type of slate. Let's jump into who are those top stacks. So if you aren't familiar with the stacking tool here, basically it's taking the DraftKings salary in terms of how they're valuing each position. And that's just going through all those starters. So quarterback one, RB one, receiver one, receiver two, tight end number one. And basically we're trying to find potentially where we can get some leverage potentially or some really good value. And what we're going to notice when we sort of buy value, and this is a pretty good kind of leverage spot you can gain as well, is going to be with Jacksonville. Jacksonville has struggled. We know that. But Trevor Lawrence gets a good matchup in this game. Uh, Travis Etienne has been a little bit of a bummer. Like, we probably wouldn't have to play him. Evan Ingram is going to be out as well. Brent Strange is uh, going to be the tight end number one. But I, I really think just going like Christian Kirk, who you guys already met and saw I really like as a kind of core play, uh, you could stack him and Trevor Lawrence, maybe go Brian Thomas Jr. or potentially Gabe Davis. I don't mind that. Or Brendan Strange. Like, those are all viable options. Another route that we can go, Jaden Daniels potentially paired up with, I'd probably say, Terry McLaurin. Or you can go Zach Ertz. I don't hate that. Geno Smith, I don't know if we need to go out of our way to target that in that matchup, but it's definitely good to see that they're being popped up as well. Uh, but that's kind of my takeaway. And then obviously, yeah, we do want to be stacking the Packers. 
They're one of the best stacks. Baltimore is going to be the best stack. So we have a lot of good spots here. All right, guys. So just going to be doing kind of a dry run of the lineup builder uh, just to see kind of what's spinning out as the best lineups currently. And again, guys, the day is continuously updating up until lineup lock. Uh, to give us the best uh, advantages. A lot of what goes into this is Vegas projections, kind of their expectations for the game. So that's part of it. But looking at what it sees as the best current lineup, you got Jaden Daniels in there. Uh, then it has Derrick Henry, who I, I mentioned, like, I, I don't know if I'm going to be as high on him as everyone else. Uh, 16% is not a lot, though. And obviously, he does have that good GPP winning upside. Pairing him up with Tyrone Tracy, I do think makes sense. Michael Pittman Jr., I do think, could have a pretty massive game. Uh, with Joe Flacco in that quarterback, I do think that that does help out Michael Pittman Jr. Then we got Wicks and Reed. Uh, George Kittle. George Kittle's back in this game. Should be good to go uh, health-wise. I don't mind that. And then Wendell Robinson. I don't necessarily love Wendell Robinson. I actually think he's going to be someone that could disappoint. Uh, this is, I guess, another kind of chalky fade I could be on, and I probably will be on, or at least underweight on the field. So, like, for me, guys, Wendell Robinson, you look at the matchup with Seattle. It's not a terrible matchup, but also uh, you take Malik Neighbors out of that offense, and you're taking out a big piece of that offense, a huge weapon out of that offense. I think a lot of people are just assuming uh, that Robinson's going to take over for that role simply because he has gotten a bunch of targets. And I just think you take out Devin Singletary out of that offense as well. It's just going to be much easier for the defense to key in on Wendell Robinson, take him away, and then you should win. And so I, I worry that he's going to be a little bit too chalky. I probably won't be on him as much as the field. And so we jump back into the lineup builder. Um, let's 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 do that. So I want Derrick Henry at, I'm going to be a little bit less than the field, maybe 15%. Not, not nothing crazy there, but Robinson, I will be less than the field with. And then let's go ahead and just kind of do some things that I typically do. Tight end, flex, and eligible. Max exposure, I typically do 35%. That's really up to you guys. Uh, but let's do some player groups. So what I want to do is, like, when a lineup includes Jordan Love, I want at least two of Jaden Reed, Tucker Craft, Dontavian Wicks. Then some people are going to ask the question, well, hey, which uh, other Packers receiver do you like the most? And I, I know the popular answer is going to be Bo Melton. And I do think that's the correct answer for this situation. With Dobbs out, Bo Melton is much more of the natural replacement for um, Romeo Dobbs. Whereas, let's say, even if Wicks was out or if you took out Jaden Reed, I think it actually would be Malik Heath. The answer to that would be play both. Obviously, you don't have to go crazy with them. Maybe 2% Wicks, maybe 2% Bo Melton. Uh, I, I think that's a good route to go. Also with this, I think I would want to have a situation where I do toss in like Jordan Wayneton a little bit or Tutu Atwell a little bit, where we're kind of or potentially Kobe Parkinson, where we're running it back with one of those players because to me, guys, that's one of the easiest games to stack. So what we could do there is I want at least two players from Green Bay or the Los Angeles Rams. I don't feel the need to do that, but... I, that is something I wanted to toss in there. Another way to go about doing that, which I don't think we need to, but would be quarterback with receiver and tight end. You could even toss in Kyron Williams into that. You could do same team and we're setting up pretty well there. But let's go back into the player group because that's really what I want. And so we're going to go Jordan Winnington in here. You could do Demarcus Robinson. I don't hate that, but let's toss in these guys and then even Colby Parkinson. And then I'm also going to toss in uh, Kyron Williams to this mix because I do want a game stack that game. And so we're going to bump this up to at least three. That might be a little bit too much. might be a little bit too little. And I'd be fine just running 20 lineups out like that. Got my Jordan Love lineups. I could also then do that with Matthew Stafford. But let's just see what this is spitting out to us. And I'm going to gonna lock in Jordan Love just to tell the data I want to be on him. Let's get him locked in there and create those lineups. And so it is going to lock him into 35%. I guess 40, it's rounding up because it's only 20 lineups. Uh, but what we're going to see is going to be more of the same. Like, I don't mind it. Pro again, probably don't want to be on Robinson that much, but these are all pretty solid builds. We got Jordan Love. It is mostly pairing him up with Wicks and Reed, which I'm fine with. And then also Kyron Williams. I'm kind of happy to do that. Let's see what 150 lineups would look like. All right, so that run is done, and we are getting a little bit more exposure, I would say, kind of more spread out in terms of those players I wanted to be on. So I'm okay with that. I like that. Uh, let's go ahead and toss in a couple more stacks. And kind of the interesting thing with this season is with all the running quarterbacks that are all being kind of the top fantasy scorers, I don't really need to 
do much more in terms of like stacking a certain group of players too much. Basically, that already naturally happens when I do the stack a quarterback with a receiver from the same team. Like that already naturally happens. And I don't feel like we need to do more than that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you guys kind of what I typically would do. If I'm doing 150 lineups, I like to do like a max exposure about, no, let's let's do 15%. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to show usage and see which players that I might have already been getting a little bit too much of. But I'm going to run it first and see which players I think I might be getting too much of that I don't want to be on that much. Like, for instance, Alexander Madison, I don't need to be on him that much. Maybe I can be on him at 15%. But who are some players that I know I want to be overweight on the field or at least at their high ownerships? Jordan Mason, I do like. Okay, Jordan Love, let's be on him at like 20%. Like, He's a quarterback. We don't need to be on him too much. Jane Daniels, I like. Kyron Williams at 40%. I'm okay with that. Tyrone Tracy Jr., about 20%. I think that's fine. Jaden Reed, let's get him up to 35%. Looks like get him up to 35%. Christian Kirk, you guys know I already like a lot. Let's get him up to 35%. Tucker Craft, I mentioned he's going to be a core play. I'll put him up to 35%. And the data is not really liking him as much. I'm going to bump up his projection to like nine just to tell the data. I want to be on Tucker Craft. Get me to 35% max exposure. That's the way to kind of go about telling the data that you want to be on uh, a player more. Just bump their projection up a little bit. <laughs> and while this is loading, I will say the number one mistake I've made is probably changing the data a little bit too much to like to put my human element into it, if you will. Um, a lot of the green screens that we I've seen come in from people uh, using it via the Discord, some uh, Twitter DMs and stuff, has been people just like dry running it, you know, and they've been very successful doing that. That's how I won, you know, several GPPs already this season with the showdown slates. Uh, one preseason main slate as well. So that's been the biggest difference maker. So my goal is to not not change too much most of the time. All right, so let's see what it's spitting out to us right now. Again, a lot of Trey Tucker still. Kind of okay with that. But I really like how it's kind of spreading everything out a decent amount here. Uh, one thing... We're going to notice a lot of Jane Daniels. The data really likes Jane Daniels. Obviously, he's going to be paired with uh, Terry McLaurin a lot. I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, let's see. Team 17% Green Bay. That makes sense. 9% LAR. I would argue I'd want to get a little bit more of that. San Francisco, uh, probably a little bit more of that as well. And I feel like that kind of does it. Kind of sums up kind of what I'm looking at for this slate. Obviously, this is going to change a little bit more throughout the morning tomorrow and really up until lineup lock. Um uh, but that's kind of my thoughts for the slate. Lots of fades, decent values that I mentioned, some stacks that we can be on, and just showing you guys how to go about you know, navigating the 9 to 5 lineup builder. But that's going to be all for this video, guys. Appreciate you being here. If you guys want access to it,